This is uh, right, Growler Sessions, episode 22. Uh, we are here totally with, uh, at, a, at a super, <laughs> yeah, very, very prepared. Uh, we are here at a super secret location. You'll never be able to guess where we are. Uh, and we have uh, our special guests, uh, Michael and Chris, and we are here hanging out, uh, ready to drink some beer. Obviously, I've got my man Jeff Fryman, and I am Sam Wynn. So <laughs> this is this head this is Growler Sessions. Um, so uh, before we get too much started, uh, last week we did uh, Growler Sessions with uh, Ian Brooks and Cliff Edgar, uh, and and uh, it's been a rough couple, rough week for those guys. And uh, we want to raise our glass to Ian. Uh, we miss you, brother, and we'll think about you forever. So uh, love you, dude. Cheers. Here's to Ian. And uh, now let's uh, drink a couple growlers and talk about talk about whatever we want. Let's get started. Fastest show, show ever. Let's <laughs> down these things. Yeah, that beer's good. Good call. Good call. Yeah. What are, what are we What are we drinking right now? Good call. Why don't you tell them? It's yeah, this guy's yeah. creation. This is our summer ale. It's um, basically just a light blonde with uh, ginger on the back end, but the hops are Denali, uh, Centennial, and Azaka. Cool. And it's just one of those super fruity with that nice little ginger twist, a little bit of spiciness. Hell yeah. 6.3, I believe, and uh, it's an easy drinker for us. What, what, ca what category would you put it in? English summer ale or something like that? What do you call it? Yeah, it's, it's right along those lines. You know, summer ales are a little more open to interpretation. <laughs> I don't think there's a real style for it. <laughs> really, you know, it's a, I don't think there's a summer ale style. Yeah, really you know, like, All right, this what is do you what call it? Is. it? We're not entering it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We want to drink it. We, 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 yeah. we, 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 the, the style is pool beer. <laughs> right. Why not? Right. Pool beer. I like that. Yeah. Um, you know, that's one of my favorite things about the trend in uh, beer these days is, is the drinkability has started to be a very important thing uh, for us craft dudes that have been drinking 8% beers for 10 years. We're ready to... <laughs> no, 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 no. no, I'm like, yeah, I can drink this nice 10% beer in the summer, but I also really would rather enjoy something a little less alcohol that I can have many, many more of. Get, getting back to that six-pack mindset, you know? <laughs> exactly. Um, I think we've there. all had it the whole time. We're just drinking about 10%. <laughs> yeah. It's really good, though. Yeah, appreciate absolutely. it. Yeah, this is. I'm super proud of this guy. It's so nice to be able to your recipe hand the reins yeah, over yeah. and allow someone to develop something and fine tune it and come up with a beer. I'm like, yeah, that's fantastic. You're killing it, dude. So it's uh, makes me feel good. It's certainly something I'm proud of him about yeah. creating. And but ginger is real nice. It like it adds depth. If you wouldn't have told me there was ginger in there, I never would have guessed that there was ginger in there. But now that I know, I like see that it's in there a little bit. Right, and that's the trick. That's the sweet right? spot. Yeah. Right. I don't, you don't want to go. Oh God, so much ginger. Oh, yeah, good a ginger know? beer. That's what it's all been about. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't put so much in there. Well, the, the key okay. is not trying to reinvent the wheel. We've put out a lot of good beers under his name that he made the recipes for. And yeah. It's not my job to come in here and be like, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> so, like, uh, figure out what's worked. You say that to me, like, once a week, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not my care. <laughs> and not about the beer. It's something else. Well, nice, man. Uh, you know, you mentioned uh, you are uh, are not entering this beer, so you don't have to worry about. Oh, that. I'm half joking about that. <laughs> I don't know what we'll be entering. We no, never but uh, you know that that beers. that definitely uh, segues <laughs> into the fact that you were the uh, first person to bring a GABF medal back to Dallas in the modern brewing history of Dallas. Um, you know, I think. Uh, Rar had uh, held one down uh, a while back, but not like, you know, they're over in Fort Worth. So uh, Dallas proper, uh, I don't know if, I haven't done any research on when the last time anyone's ever won one here, but I, I'm, I'm hoping that it happened at some point. Oh yeah, it's definitely happened since yeah. then, not yeah. more than one. I mean, heck, there, was, there weren't many breweries back then. Sure. Now there's 50, 60, I don't know how many breweries there are people. I mean, someone, hey, you hear about this new brewery? I'm like, I, no, I've never heard of that. <laughs> yeah. I'm not. I remember back in the day, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like you said the early days. Yeah. Knew, you knew when someone was opening just, up, their whole lineup. There's a in your back gate every, like, every two weeks. Yeah, that's right. Just show up. You, know, yeah. you worked here. This guy was yeah. painting CO2 tanks for me. So <laughs> fine job you did. Still, I, that's one yeah. of the things I always think it about with you. Stencil work. Nice. Yeah, right. Stencil work. <laughs> nice white with blue on there. Bang up job, bang up job. But yeah, at first I thought he was being a dick, and then I was like, I think he's being serious. I think he actually I did a really good job. Already. <laughs> Trust me, it, it could be both. <laughs> <laughs> what do they say? There's truth in jest or something like yeah. that. You know, make a joke, poke some fun at someone, but you also mean it. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, you just don't seem like the passive aggressive kind of guy either, though. You know, like, oh, yeah, hey, guys, do this. But 
you go into that brewery and it's just like cl like clean as fuck, you know, excuse my language. But that's what I always loved about it. I was like, how do you even, but I think you started, how, how hard was it to step away from the reins like that? It was, or was it relatively it, easy? Cause you're like, no, it was, it, it was hard, it's still hard. Um, yeah. But you know, part of the whole idea was to develop people um, and let them spread their wings and do things on their own, you know, um, make their own decisions, make us better. I mean, I tell all these guys, man, make this brewery better when you leave than it was when you got here. So it's definitely been hard. I mean, yeah, being in there and being in the brew house and brewing the actual beers and then, you know, day in and day out. And it got to the point where it's like, all right, I'm just going to do the new beers. And then it's got to the point where, you know, I'm not in there brewing at all. I didn't brew last year. I haven't brewed this year. Um, you emptied one mash tun. I emptied a mash tun. That's right. <laughs> hey, just got to stay work. fresh. And I delivered a beer uh, right. not all that long ago either on the way home. Right. Why Wait, not? Yeah. who are you delivering to? I, uh, want, I want a Michael delivery. <laughs> <laughs> that was a place right next to my house, and they were out of beer, and I was on my way home. So I'm like, yes, let's let's go ahead and do that. But, yeah, it's, it's definitely was difficult to leave because you lose a little bit of the cultural aspect, too, when I'm working and sweating alongside every single guy in the yeah. brew house, and then I'm not there you know, every day and you're relying upon the next, you know, generation of leader here to be passing that on to the other guys. So it can be difficult. I mean, I'm probably talking to Noah about the flood. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, that's, that's one of the things I think we were doing, a, we were doing a interview with uh, Free Beer Friday. Jeff and I were with Ben um, Esley, how do you pronounce his last name? Easily. Easily. I, I, I was going to say Easily until you said Esley. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've, I've been, been saying this wrong. Yeah. Easily is right. I'm, I'm, I very frequently pronounce everybody's last name wrong. That's the thing. I did all of the collective guys' last names completely wrong. <laughs> uh, I even, I even screwed up Goldfuss on purpose at the end because I had gotten. Uh, Everybody else's name so wrong. Just well, I didn't realize till the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame that it was Rick Ocasek. For all these years, I was Rick Ocasek, man. I love the car. Just Rick Ocasek. And then I learned three weeks ago, oh, it's Ocasek. God, it's only been 30 years, you know. But, yeah. Hey, better late than never, right? That's what they say. Um, and, I, you know, we were talking about uh, cleanliness. You're back to your bar, I mentioned that to you. Uh, this is a clean thing. We were moving around some stuff so we could get the formation right. And he's like, I found some smudge on my forehead. Right, like, yeah. Good, good yes, for yeah. you. Well, I mean, it's <laughs> a little roll. That's what I said. It's like, man, we've only built this a year and a half ago. And I set everyone down and said, man, it's not ever going to be cleaner than it is right now. Right. Yeah. So I want to keep it as close to what it is right now yeah. as long as we possibly can. And you know me. It, I mean, you even referred to it earlier about cleanliness and sanitation is, you know, so huge. You know what? I mean... The experience when you go, you've been to the places yeah. where it smells like sewage or you know a dumpster yeah. or whatever. Yeah. It's like that beer experience isn't going to be the same, man. Yeah. It's not going to be the same. No, so no, it's not know. even that. I mean, most people have been. I, I know what you're saying, but like most people that have been here, uh, when you walk into the brewery, it's like the aesthetic has like it's it's just clean. Not clean in the sense that I mean every brewery has to be clean or you're going to make shit product. But it's like when you walk in, you're just like, why is that hose? in a circle like that. Right? <laughs> right. Right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that was passed on from my brewer sensei. And he's like, man, you can tell a lot about a brewer by how he treats his hose. And so that's something... <laughs> <laughs> you need to make that shirt. <laughs> yeah. You know, I hadn't thought about it. I hadn't thought about it in that respect, but it is pretty good. Quote, Greg Matthews. But that's something I adopted, and, you know, it's a small detail stuff. Do that, yeah. and it's something that they've always carried on, and we could go back there right now, and if... Well, I don't know if they're brewing right now, but at the end of the day, it will most certainly be all coiled up and looking all nice and straight. And, you know, that, that floats down from the top, you know. You're, you can only expect your, your, your crew to treat everything as well as you do, you know. And it's you got to be running around and leading by example and, and showing that, hey, I'm not just going to step over this. Every time it's not done, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix it. And then you gotta, right. you got to show that. And that's, show well, that's what goes back to, is it hard to walk away? It's like, yeah, it is hard to walk away because... I did it all right. I mean, I brewed, I kegged, and you know, did everything. And part of the reason I did that is because I wanted the next guy to know. In fact, the next guy, the very first guy, was this guy. I wanted him to know that I'm in this too, right? And when I say, "Hey, man, go clean the bathrooms," well, guess I was guess who was cleaning it before I asked you to clean the bathroom? Mm -hmm. That was right. me. It starts at the top, and so it was really easy to, 
you know, carry that through and lead by example where they're seeing that day in and day out. And they don't see that from me anymore other than, you know, when I come in here on the weekends and I'm in the bathroom longer than normal, it's only because I'm in there cleaning. <laughs> I'm straightening stuff. Literally, sure. Keith Slabs was here a few weeks ago and I had been in there a couple of minutes cleaning it out and I walked out and he goes, oh my God, what'd you just do in the bathroom? I'm, no, 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 it's not that bad. I was straightening it, making it look better. Yeah. But yeah, you I came mean, out I, like I, sweaty and like, right. Oh, and I had <laughs> our and like a yes, the, bar, <laughs> <laughs> the bar back there, I mean, it's all, the joke is people don't pick up after themselves. I, I, so I make it a point, man. I never leave my dirty glasses over there hoping that, you know, no one else will too. It doesn't always seem to work, but I try. You know, yeah. you have, uh, you have, been recently transitioning into the bar realm in the same way, uh, you know, you started as a, as a brewery and you've kind of taken the opposite path as us. We started as a bar and then added the brewery thing within a couple weeks after being open because it takes longer to open a brewery than a bar. So we started carrying only guest beers and we poured only guest beers for a month or two before we were able to start putting ours on. Um, and then we, so we were like a bar and then transitioned into being a brewery right, and you've right. kind of taken that, that opposite thing. You're still both obviously, but I remember when this was all sweaty and no HVAC oh, and yeah, you know, absolutely. it was all brown. I remember when, it being, yeah, <laughs> it was yes. very brown. When I came here initially, I mean, it was still out of the 1970s. There yeah. was like carpet on the wall. And stuff. I mean, <laughs> carpet on the yes. wall. Like yes. The physics branch. Right. God, we're having to scrape all that latex tile off of the concrete floors, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, this place, and we waited a long time to do this, right? I mean, yeah. it became legal to pour beer, you know, years before we decided, all right, let's jump into that game. So how long has your tap room been open as a proper tap room? So it's been not quite a year and a half, so we launched it for our five-year anniversary. Our five-year okay. anniversary was the first time we opened this to the public, and then we actually officially opened that following January of 17. So it's been a year and three months, a year and a quarter, I guess. I had to kick a couple walls down, too. Oh, yeah. We should show the video. <laughs> oh, yeah? We should definitely you show got the a video. Good, good demo, some good demo videos? <laughs> a little karate demo. Jeff, <laughs> Jeff and I have a Roll good... the clip, Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you could uh, cut to the Pedicolas film, that'd be Inner right. theme song. <laughs> it, it's worth, wah, 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 it's wah, worth wah, the wah, viewing. Wah, wah, wah. It's classic, this guy <laughs> doing a little demolition work down downstairs. Uh, we did... You have it? Here, I mean, yeah, come on. Well, I can't believe I sold myself out yeah. like that. <laughs> At least show it to these guys so they can get a good laugh out of it. We did, uh, we had a, we had a cinder block wall at Brain Dead where the glass wall is that you can see into the brewery. That yeah. used to be cinder block. It was like two, two buildings. And, Keep in mind, uh, right, here we go. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's, hold on. Hey, Anton, can you change the focus on this? <laughs> <laughs> this is good. This has to go. Yes, we're getting this thing. I was like, how's this going to translate to uh, people not being able to see this? Never yeah. mind. You never know where the show is. <laughs> They'll be able well, to see it. Yeah. You get anything there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually airing on America's Home. Plenty of some videos. This, yeah, right? This, you know, <laughs> that was good. Thank you. <laughs> That's brilliant. Uh, yeah, the very next line is Chad, another brewer coming in there going, that worked out perfectly! <laughs> <laughs> in case that didn't read, he karate kicked a wall and bounced right off. We call it karate kick. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. You know, flip-flop karate kick. Definitely showed how much attempted, attempted karate If he had gone through that wall, that would have hurt. Mm, that was a bad <laughs> so, uh, idea. Yeah. He's wearing flip-flops. <laughs> He's <laughs> wearing flip-flops. Also true. <laughs> So, uh, if, Only a so when you walk into Brain Dead, if like you walk in the door, we would have had a like a cinder block wall that yeah. went all the way you across. You can see a line right there. Um, and if you look on the ground, you can still see where it used to stand. And uh, Jeff and I uh, liked, you know, it was a cinder block wall, and needed to come down. We were going to pay somebody to take it down, so we might as well take some swings at some. Some cinder blocks. Let's have so some we had, fun. Let's, we yeah, have, let's some, we have some good stuff. videos of us smashing it with the with the sledgehammers and stuff, and poking our head through and having yeah. a good time. We've got those videos, and then uh, that night, I think you know we're in Deep Ellum, so I go out and I get 
drunk with my friends like normally do, and the bars closed at 2 a.m. and we were like, I got some sledgehammers in a wall that needs to come down. That's the brewery. <laughs> Who this wants is a to good idea? In? Oh, it was a b very bad idea. Like a stranger knocked on the door and was like, "What are y'all doing?" I was like, "Come in here, take a swing." You know, I don't have insurance. Let's do this. <laughs> He's like, no. and uh, yeah, he, he this uh, is a worse idea than y'all's eclipse idea. <laughs> well, his name's Tom Bridwell. He ended up he ran sound for us yeah. for the last Awesome Sound show, and he's like ended up being someone who helps us. He installed. Oh, really? He installed the sound system at Bulls and Tacos, and he was at that point he was just a random dude walking by. <laughs> the guy who knocked on the door? Yeah, the guy that knocked <laughs> on the door that night is ended up you like didn't even being know a this? professional. No, I, I That's thought how it was, we found that I guy. I thought it was him and his buddy like inside getting drunk, just being like. Ah. Uh, you look like you're and, hireable. <laughs> and you know, I I took engineering when I was in college for a year. And uh, engineering or college? Four uh, yeah. well, I think both, it was the four both, year. Both. And uh, and so you know, I, we I I was smart and smart, and I did uh, like aqueduct style. We did we only took arches out, and we left some good like support in there. And uh, Rick, wait or, during the destruction? Yeah, during the destruction. You were relying on your one year engineering. <laughs> oh wait, Rick. we're gonna destroy this wall, but we're gonna do it in such a way to leave these arches, guys. We yeah. want to be careful here. We don't want it to don't, fall yeah, down because right. it went all the way up to the ceiling. Rick said <laughs> took them two swings with the sledgehammer the next day to make the whole wall fall down. He said I very easily could have uh, hurt one. That's of my point. <laughs> that, that's my point. I got this, guys. Yeah. We're gonna leave an yeah. arch. We're all gonna be just yeah. fine. But I, hey, you were right. It worked. And everyone was like drunk but having fun. And I have this funny video slow mo going down, and like drunk people are like, Ugh. like trying to slam sledgehammers. Sledgehammers are heavy. Wall. I didn't realize it before this day. But that's the that's the good stuff, you know. Is the, that is the good is stuff. That. No, that's the <laughs> that's the stuff you're still talking about. Yeah, right? absolutely. You All know? this time later, you're not talking yeah. about that ninja regular kick, old flip flop ninja kick. Oh, that thing's <laughs> all that. That's it's legend. Definitely, it's definitely my shining moment. Really yeah. Like What's the eclipse? Oh, well, you remember the eclipse, yeah. right? Yeah. Eclipse day. It's um, where uh, the sun and the moon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you uh, see. Great, yes. The eclipse. <laughs> the moon blocks the, the sunlight. For those who don't know. The <laughs> uh, these guys get the genius idea of, I guess it was a slow day, but out drinking, or maybe it was, was it a Friday? Because Fridays are typically, we try to do eat as little as possible on Fridays. You work around. But after course. having several beers, they decided, well, this is a good idea. Let's... This was their idea because I wasn't here. Let's all get on the roof. <laughs> We're the best ideas. Let's all get on the roof. Let's all of us who have been drinking yeah. get on the 25 foot ladder uh, and climb on the roof. Huh? This, you know, rickety little ladder. <laughs> well, the each of these people. The, I'm get like, closer. oh, yeah, that's what I said. I'm like, okay, so y'all are 25 <laughs> feet closer to the eclipse. This is worth it for all of y'all. The entire crew hey, to get sense. up on the roof. Yeah. And then we gotta get the coolers up. Right, the coolers. Oh, oh, shit, I didn't think of that. <laughs> and they have a tent. So they're carrying all this stuff. You don't want to get sunburned. Well, well it's a quick question. Yeah, you've yeah. been yeah. put a pop-up tent before, right? <laughs> Good. Strong. Yeah, I mean, it's called teamwork, you know? I like it. It's, it's one of our team building That's right. right. That's right. That's right. You do it once a year. Unless the 2025 20, eclipse is not going to be executed in the same manner. Uh, I think it's 2020. Drew Herter says, Jeff, put your mouth underneath the sledgehammer tap and rip it open. <laughs> <laughs> we got to hit these growlers first. Yeah. Got one. That'll be $2. Uh, um, <laughs> Andrew Sigmund, who, uh, who I, I call Drew. Uh, my buddy Drew uh, is posting in here. That's funny that the both comments are from, from Andrews. Uh, but he's very observant, and his question is, is Rumble in Russia a new beer for the World Cup? Ah, yes. the no. That was, that was very that was, astute. That was yeah, spry. absolutely, it is. I mean, so in uh, Brazil in 2010, we came up with Thrilla in Brazilla, right, to take off of the Ali fight, the yeah. Thrilla in Manila, yeah. and my guy Adrian, who was in here, right over here, when we're at our first party, he's like. Rumble in Russia. I'm like, rumble in the jungle, rumble in the Russia. The other Ali fight, let's do it. So for four years, we've been sitting on this. That's oh, going to be awesome. And then the U.S. crashes out. I'm like, are we even going to do it? But we're like, yeah, we, we've still got to do it. So, right. yes. We, we've been holding an idea we, for four years. Right? Yes, yes. <laughs> so we literally brewed the beer yesterday. I got this shirt yesterday. A couple of us got the shirt yesterday. So, yeah, I guess the cat's out of the bag. That is I, our new – it's a red, right? Okay. Russia World Cup, so it's a red. Yeah. Uh, the little – 
Tetris, the Russia. I just I made mean. the connection. Okay, the good. Tetris and the, I'm still and the wondering: Russian. is everyone going to get that? Yeah, is yeah. It, uh, yeah. Tetris so. is a is a Russian Russian made game. The old the original uh, credits had the little like dome Kremlin thing. Yeah. That's right. What, what's that architecture called? Does anybody have any what? idea what the like ice cream cone on top of the Kremlin is? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Russian, St. Petersburg. Russian. Google, Google. <laughs> right. Hey. Google. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Google, Please. Google, and then type in <laughs> Russian <knows>? architecture. <laughs> uh, Bobby. Kramer wants to know if uh, Chris is still allowed to play basketball. Ooh, tough question. <laughs> <laughs> really? The hard I'm not, the not hard, allowing the hard, it. The hard hitting ones. <laughs> I was there last week and it was raining threes, so as long uh -oh. as I stay on the perimeter, I think I'm okay. Oh, uh, okay. Threes. All right. All right. So just, I imagine him raining threes like Philip Seymour Hoffman in Along Came Polly. Just Clanking them off. Make it rain. That's ridiculous. I'm, I'm pretty good. <laughs> the, only, uh, the only basketball I play is pool basketball, and I am a force to be reckoned with underneath the basket in pool basketball, I'll tell you. Nice. That's why uh, I'm, my, I got, out. I'm really sturdy. I, have, I, have I low see that hips. in you. I have, I have, I have, I have <laughs> legs of a Welshman. Um, so I have those. I have those coal miner hips, and uh, and I just you know my my upper body. If I sit next to someone that's six three, we're the same height at the table, and then like and then I get up and I drop. <laughs> 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 but, just uh, plant and yeah, yeah nice. Got those good, we'll play some basketball good right out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. In fact, last time ball. I played, I think I broke a finger. But... Game on. So no, Bobby, no. <laughs> right. no I don't want to play any more basketball. Our guys get hurt, not typically here, but elsewhere doing whatever. The reason whatever. he's asking that is I tore a calf muscle playing a game, so I got to brew in a walking boot for about two months, and that was fun. Ooh. And then had a scooter. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, nice. Georgina, Georgina, Georgina was brewing in a boot there for a while. Yeah, too. that's you right. Yeah, she hurt herself booted. in Colorado on a hike. <laughs> it's like, well, God, at least these people aren't getting hurt at work. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's what but stop getting yourself hurt outside of work, too. <laughs> no joke. I mean, work here, you're not allowed to do anything. Yeah, don't we, get hurt. You can do whatever you want, uh, just don't get hurt. I mean, the beer's got to get brewed. We Those kegs a, aren't going to wash themselves. We've got a pretty automated system back there. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. The least automated system of any brewer in Dallas, I assure you. We built our own keg well, you washer. you still have to stir your mash. Don't stir you? the mash, bro. Yeah. Break it up. Pan Whirlpool. Oh, that, that, We're craftsmen. That, that wooden Texas uh, mash craftsman. Brother, Brad, who made that for you? Uh, intrinsic carry. Yeah. Uh, you know intrinsic, right? Yeah, yeah, um, so carry came through here and was friends with uh, Barrett, right? Black Man Brewing. And he ended up putting that thing together after he volunteered some time. And not, that's the gold, right? That's the stuff that's like, this is badass. This guy made it. And it's so much more personal. 100%. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, it's like when it came down to like start, what, what, what are we actually going to put on the walls? I'm like, oh, we've got to have that. We've got to have that on the wall. That thing's awesome. Nice. Those guys actually did fun stuff with our work. They took a, a Homer last runnings and made some incredible sours with it as well. Yeah, they took some Velvet Hammer runnings. And so. they, the only... Sour hammer that's out there. Yeah, now I think Barrett actually still has a bottle or two. Yeah, yeah. nice. Yeah. Cool. So track them down and hey man, Barrett, let's crack watch it. Right. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Someone, here in someone, minutes. someone text Barrett. We've had. Uh, yeah, I'd love that. Come, come, pop it up and. But Cliff, not here. Man. We don't allow sour. Cheers, beer. brother. <laughs> um, so Barrett. Uh, uh, what's he what's he doing? He's he's left to go out on his own. Does he have a new place that he's landing or is that like private information? I don't want to like I don't know the whole story. story. <laughs> I did read an article. I don't know someone put out it, And the thing that caught my interest is he's developed a little bit of a yeast business Okay, um, cool. great propagating yeast and selling it to brewers is I, I swear that someone in South America was buying it and I actually thought man what a cool idea I mean Opening a brewery, hell, everyone, my dog's neighbor's dog yeah. is doing that, right? Yeah. Everyone's opening a brewery. I'm like, that's a good idea, man. Good old Open up a yeast brink, uh, yeast propagating, a uh, yeast propagation business. That's awesome. Who's doing that? Who's challenging those guys? So, I, I, other than that, I don't know what he's doing. Right on. He's a talented dude. I'm, I'm happy for to sure. See a him. great guy. Too. He's the first. Uh, he's the first person that I've known that has uh, that has been a. Uh, someone that I, I, I would call an, a, you know, an acquaintance that I have a relationship with that brewed at Deep Ellum that didn't come and get really drunk at Brain Dead the <laughs> afternoon of their last shift. Uh, I, I've never heard that. Delira did it, uh, you know, Tommy, yeah. Drew, we've, uh, 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 Jeremy, uh, 
when yeah. you just all when the you moved out to everybody Virginia. else. Yeah. yeah, no, seriously. <laughs> I remember like being like getting hammered. They're like, oh, I don't work there anymore. Let's let's do this. I'm moving on, you know. And it's like we're the bar next door, basically equivalent yeah. for beer. What's wrong know? with Barrett? He seems sober. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so Barrett, <laughs> Barrett, if you're watching, you you got to come sit with me at my bar and get yeah. drunk as a as a I'll bring one of those sour hammers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, yeah. I'm not sure I've ever seen Barrett drunk. He's always so well spoken yeah. and composed you know, and tall. He's tall, right? Yeah. But he always seems seen him drunk. drunk. Have you? Okay, good. good. <laughs> he's a good. Right. Well, yeah, I'm glad to hear he, that. He always has that smile, just like, ha ha, you know? He did a couple times. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, That's I'm probably not sure. in any condition to judge anybody else's. Levels of intoxication at GABF. That's what I'm oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, I, I know for a fact that is the least true thing you've ever said. So, spe <laughs> speaking of, we are drinking uh, Royal Scandal, which is uh, the gold medal winner that I was referencing earlier. That's it. Uh, one. Yeah. one of my favorite stories that, uh, that you've told me was uh, the story of you hearing your name for the first time uh, winning that medal. Uh, if, if you know what I'm talking about. Absolutely. I'd love it if you'd tell it. <laughs> yeah. Um, Cloud nine. Royal Scandal had been in the market for 40 days when I went to GABF and literally on the flight out there, my initial plan was to brew three different beers or two beers every quarter and then switch until I really found a beer that hit. I, I see a lot of breweries say, oh, hey, I'm launching with this flagship. I'm like, well, how yeah. the hell do you know what your flagship is? Yeah. Um, so it was just, all right, I'll brew these, and then we'll just go on to the next one if it doesn't really hit, if it doesn't really make a mark. Um, and on the flight out there, I told Melissa, y'all know my wife, I'm like, you know what, we're, we're done with Royal Scandal. It's time to bring on the next one. We're not going to brew any more Royal Scandal. <laughs> uh, yeah, literally. It's we're not brewing anymore. It, you know, it, know it, it, it didn't catch on like Velvet Hammered, right? Because, like, uh, delivering the last keg at the time. Yeah, the yeah. and so <laughs> we, last one. we had that history, and so then we're in the auditorium, you know, uh, at GABF, and I mean, you, it's a lengthy process. It's like a graduation. They're reading them all, reading yeah, yeah. them all, reading them all. And so, you know, they read you the bronze. Categories they read you really the silver. The three, then they read you the gold. And, you know, I'm just a we're first year guy. We're I'm just going, God, I'm bronze. Please, you know, bronze. And, you know, bronze passes and silver passes. And you, ah, oh, dang it. You know, it didn't yeah. happen. So literally on, on that category, they read the bronze. They read the silver. And then when they read the gold, they said royal scandal. And I remember my wife. Like she made out, she she yelled something, made some noise, and my initial thought was, oh my god, there's another brewery with a beer called Royal Scandal. <laughs> Literally, that was my first thing, and then it's a oh, Pentacles no. brewery. I'm like, oh wait, no, that is us. <laughs> yes, we no. did. But, but maybe but, not. But yeah, but I mean, initially it's like she's all excited. I'm like, no, there's another. Oh god, but that was the first thought that went through my head. Oh god, there's another Royal Scandal out there. So, uh, random follow-up question to that. Do you remember if you made it in underneath the Charlie Papazian handshake before he switched to the pound? Do you, do you, do you um, know? I can't remember. Do you know if you got in on the... <laughs> I know one time I disregarded the hand. Yeah? Bump. Oh, um, I don't... Just one flat, I think, it, on cloud my, oh, I yeah. think back then it was a handshake. Yeah? Um, but I... No, for a fact, because I thought about it later. I'm like, oh, but I kind of know him a little bit personally. He taught my wife's cousin. He actually drank off the very first keg of Velvet Hammer we ever produced. No way. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> that's so, fucking cool. The very first keg. I had a I had a little launch party here. The, the very first keg. I mean, my kids at the time were like five and eight. They all had a taste of Hammer. I yeah. had a bunch of friends here, and then we put it on that old keg rigger that you yeah. remember that was over there. And as a result of my wife's connection, he was in town and said, he had asked her cousin, oh, I remember something about a brewery. So he came over here. And so literally yeah. I poured him a beer off the very first keg of Velvet Hammer. I still have the keg collar, like everyone that was at the party and yeah. Charlie Papazian on there. And That's wild. Yeah, I mean, it was just, I'm like, this is, this is nuts. This is crazy. <laughs> and then I drove him in my box truck over to Deep Ellum. When, when we were done, I'm like, yeah, I'll give you a ride. I gave him a ride in the box truck. That's awesome. Yes. <laughs> then I flew to Arkansas and drove back. So Charlie Papazian, if you're not familiar with him, he is uh, one of the like Mount Rushmore of craft beer people for those of us in the industry. Uh, yeah, people outside of the industry thing. don't necessarily uh, fully hold him in the reverence because he is the guy that like really like made the scene as a home brewer. Yeah. He wrote the home brewing books and 
relax and have a home brew is like the mantra of every brewer that's ever gotten frustrated anywhere. We've all mumbled that in our head one time at least to calm ourselves down. Uh, but most also famously, I will not relax. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm very tense. I'm a professional. <laughs> um, but uh, Charlie Papazian started the Great American Beer Festival, which is now the, I think, the largest beer festival in the world. I would imagine the largest reputable beer festival in the world. Uh, they have something like 40,000 beers from a thousand different breweries or like just it. something absurd. Uh, uh, and he started that festival 30 <laughs> years ago, 35 years ago. I don't know, I was talking to Friday. Papazian <laughs> starting GABF. Anyways, it was a long time ago and he started it and he did it yeah, in Boulder and it was like a, it 84? was in the bottom floor of a hotel or something and he, and he grew it over 30 people, some okay. odd years. No, you can look on the website, you can see all the stats of, uh, of GABF yeah, over the years. Years. Some cool yeah. things. Yeah. But anyways, he's one of the most important people in beer, and when you win a Great American Beer Festival award, he's the guy that shakes your hand on stage and hands it to fist you. Fist bumps so, you. Well, now he fist bumps you, so actually getting a handshake is... Uh, it works is out for me, too, because I'm also kind of a germaphobe, yeah. so I'm fine with the fist bump. I figured it was about just some big old burly brewer I gave the dude a big hand. hug. Yeah. I, I wrapped him up. And so, I, you, know. you know, eight years ago, nine years ago, Charlie used to have a booth, and you could just go by the booth and shake Charlie's hand. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, you, he had a thing, and then if he when he left, <laughs> uh, when he like went to go to the bathroom or went to go drink some beer or something, they'd replace it with a cardboard cutout. <laughs> so I have pictures of me with the cardboard cutout nice. and pictures of me with actual nice. Charlie Papazian. But when I swung back by and he wasn't there, I was like, well, I gotta get a picture with the cardboard cutout. Yeah, but his book was <laughs> the first book I ever bought. First homebrew book I ever bought was The Joy of Homebrew. Yeah. His book, you know, so. I was like, oh man, it's my, sort of my first beer book. I came at it from a different angle. I was into beer from the flying saucer side before I even got it all into the homebrew aspect. Um, and my first book was actually, I got to tell Garrett Oliver about this, um, but Garrett Oliver's um, book, uh, Brewer's Table. And that is one of my favorite books. But that book I still have is very meaningful to me because I was. I mean, this was 12 years ago. I was, you know, I was just now legal to drink, 21 years old, and uh, Schlabs. Happy birthday, Keith Schlabs! Happy by the way, man. it is Keith's Keith's birthday. Happy birthday, uh, Schlabs! So happy birthday to the Schlabinator. <laughs> they, they, they just got a um, message from Keith reminding him. <laughs> well, no, 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 no. And uh, tell me happy birthday. And he <laughs> got he got Garrett Oliver to sign a, that book to me, and he, you know, cheers, Garrett Oliver to Sam, blah blah blah. And then on the page right before that, I have to try not to cry. But my, my page right before that. <laughs> Uh, Keith wrote, I hope this helps you get started on your craft, to, on your quest to learn more about beer. And oh, signed sweet. It Keith. And it was like 12 years ago, and it was my first beer book, and it was this really cool, like, I don't know, it's probably one of, like, if my house caught on fire, it would be like, dog, brewmaster's table. Well, that's what I, that's what I was going to say. Listen. Where is that book right, right now? Where is it? It's in my office right next to my desk. I know exactly okay. where it is. And it still has, the, it has four bookmarks in it. Um, about styles I didn't fully understand, and it was uh, the splits on ESBs and bitters and all of that, and then one was uh, hybrid styles about Kolsch's and those weird hybrid styles. Like, like man, that whole thing it just means the world to me. So, um, yeah, it's cool awesome. how little stuff like that yeah. can just like. You well, know, and that's why I asked you. Oh no, I've got it right there. You still, it's like you still value it, and it's right. Uh -huh. You know, you see it every day. I've let like two people borrow it ever. Oh, you lent like, it out? Yeah, Can well, I it, it was to people that, you <laughs> know, <laughs> if, you, if you read it, I would love for you to read my book and then write a little note in the end about your, uh, for the your, fifth your, bookmark. your, your rereading of, of, of the Master's <laughs> right. Table. Uh, I'm super nostalgic in really silly ways like that, though. I love, I love that kind of stuff. Oh, I do, too. That's yeah. what it's about. It's about the memories, right? It's about mm -hmm. the experience, you know, as much as anything. When we first built Brain Dead, our architect was this old school guy, and he would like watercolor paint Scott Arbuckle, but he would like watercolor paint things and hand drawn. Nothing was done on a computer. He would like give us hand drawn elevations. Did you and say things Starbuckle? Like uh, Arbuckle. Scott Arbuckle. But, Scott Arbuckle. Yeah, but yeah. close, close. That was he probably his website. Definitely go by Starbuckle. Starbuckle <laughs> at gmail.com. Um, no. He's at home going, I already go by that. 
That's my <laughs> name, <laughs> damn it. It's we, were, we were like designing the place, and he built us a foam core replica of Brain Dead with the printed out floor plan on the inside where all the measurements were blown, and there was like three times as many tables in there because it's just. Everything was, wasn't good with the tape measure. It was good with the foam cord. <laughs> uh, but it looked but, awesome. Uh, no, it was super cool. And it's sitting in my office. Like, I have that. Oh, sweet. And you can put it in it. And I have these weird little nostalgia things that I've dropped in there. Like, I have the, the old flash drive, uh, that yellow plastic yeah. one, that little crummy one that had all of our, like, PPM documents for, like, raising yeah. money and everything. I, like, put that little flash drive in it. I'm, I've got weird stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Like, uh, like, like the keg. Like, he has, like, keg little Jeff and yeah. Sam's like, hey, Jeff, what are you doing? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a custom Lego Legos. The door's closed. <laughs> the Fryman bobblehead is yeah. so popular. Everyone's got one. Um, so what's a, what's a good like? Uh, I'll give you an example. What's a, what's a good like shitty building this place story that you have? My example for Brain Dead would be uh, that we couldn't get the patio poured, so it was all mud on the outside, and the city froze our construction on the patio but didn't freeze our construction inside. So in order to get all of our brewing equipment in, there was, you've seen how big our patio is. Imagine if that was all mud with rebar rigs on it. Oh God. On yeah. that west side by the- and That was it. The, yeah. And then the front storefront was open and that was our day to get the brewing equipment in. So they took uh, like a bulldozer and chains and picked them up on the street and slung it into us and we caught all the tanks. I love them, brewers. Pull them in, <laughs> set them down. That's Come it. on, everybody. And then, uh, yeah, totally. Watch and then those bright watch. tanks that are behind the bar. <coughs> we had uh, Ace Cordell, uh, who made the, the keg monster out front, local artist, beer guy, you know, used to work at a bottle shop and just all around good beer dude. Uh, he made us these uh, little like racks that lifted those bright tanks up behind the bar that you, so you can see them and they look up high. Uh, we got eight construction dudes and we Jesus. just picked them up. We straight picked them up like this with forearm forklifts, like like on like on t as seen on TV, and Drew crawled underneath us and wiggled this. Oh things my like God! Yeah. <laughs> OSHA is swinging by. Uh, got, you got it. You got it. Right. You got it. I'm about to that. have a heart attack. Just are you out of the way? Okay. Oh, roof story. I mean, when, <laughs> when, when we, we brought in equipment, we did it just the opposite. We hired professionals. And oh come on. I had actually <laughs> measured out the size of the we thought about dock that. door. The building did catch on fire. Oh, see now we've got a, now we've got a story yeah. here. That's yeah. what, that's what I'm trying to dig out. Yeah, that, that's a fun one where we had a transformer blow outside and a couple of brewery vehicles catch on fire. The building almost starts catching on fire. The fire department's like, until Encore shuts it off, we can't do anything. Oh no! So we're just watching everything burn. From the it. fire department? They were just watching. Well, there was, there was a live wire. Yeah, they can't it just water. douse it yeah. with water. You yeah. can't do that. I mean, I thought oh. they would have other yeah. equipment to. Man, that's oh, yeah. maybe the worst day at the brewery for me. I remember walking down the street here the trying to compose people. myself because all the employees are here and I'm about yeah. to cry, right? And I remember just thinking, man, am I about to watch this brewery burn down? Yeah, you put it all on black and it's like about to land on red. And it's like, oh. <laughs> right, right, right. I, th I think the first car that went off was actually an employee's car, though. Well, it was part of the uh, Yeah, I mean, but it just started very small and then one vehicle's on fire and then... Another vehicle's on fire, oh. and then a third vehicle's on fire, and now the door over there is on fire, the outside of the building, in fact. Will you grab a tap handle? <laughs> uh, I mean, so some of the tap handles that were in the vehicles we, we've saved as yeah. a, you memento. know, as a memento, like you, a reminder of, well, I don't know it. why the hell I want to be reminded of the worst day in our brewery <laughs> history. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's know? funny stuff. It's we're, like, we're a, funny it's like a scar. It's yeah. awesome. You know, you're like, yeah. and then this is the day that... <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Well, the worst part for me was losing, I think, a batch of either Velvet Hammer or Winter Bench, and I can't remember because the fermentation temp got too high. And That's right. We had some issues there. No power. No power. I mean, like, yeah, that was sad. But yeah, so here's here's you know here's the tap Damn. handle. Oh, shit. That's this is a, this is this is a right good there. condition tap handle. Yeah. Right, so Wait, so that come. was in the vehicle. This was in a car. Oh, okay. This is in one of the cars. Yeah. The whole front side of this building started. That door was on fire. Um, all the windows were melted out. I mean, the heat was ridiculous. There's got to be a beer name, right? I mean, that you. Can, well, we did actually you use it. On. So um, <laughs> at one point. 
you know, mentioning moving away from the brew side of things, the brewers got this great idea to, hey man, let's make a beer on our own and not tell Michael about it. Oh, uh, uh oh. Here's, here's, you know, here's a half gone one, right? No, so yes. this one took a little more damage at top. Uh, that's pretty sweet. So <laughs> they brewed a beer, probably the first beer y'all did, right? Let's like brew a beer, not tell Michael. Exclusively. About it. <laughs> that, that was my well, he had the yeah. foresight to actually tell me. He came and said, "Dude, we want to do this," and I'm like, "No, yeah. I love it. That's fucking awesome." I'm no, glad. I think I told you we did this. <laughs> Maybe it may, have, it, it may have already been in the process. Just letting you know, this is um, right now. But, but man, so I'm we sorry. called the beer clandestine or clandestine, you know, however you want to say that. Uh, and the tap panel that we used, really we just like put a, we just put a piece of tape on there and wrote clandestine, and we used this as the tap handle when yeah. we had it here in yeah. the tap room for I, a long time. I drank time. it here. It was like an event, I think, that y'all did because I remember there was like six vintages of some stuff on in the back, and I couldn't get off that beer. I was drinking clandestine. That was it. So time. that was their their I first see, foray I, into I, hey, let's do a, our own recipe. Let's not rely on him to write a recipe. So that was which for me was like yeah, awesome, mm -hmm. kick ass, yeehaw. yeehaw. Yeah, do it. Yeah, that's awesome, man. So, it, it, this is kind of a weird segue, but kind of still about like. Making I'm straight, dude. I've told you like a hundred <laughs> times. Talking told, about the God, I, about I've it. told you so many times. <laughs> I am straight, dude. <laughs> Fuck you guys. I'm not even <laughs> no, you can't do that. <laughs> I, I, I just. <laughs> Uh, I'm telling you, no, yeah, here's the, they brought the hood ornament to the truck. All right. This is the only thing that was left yeah. of that truck. Damn. Right? I'm sorry to laugh at somebody's hardship. I'll be, that's, that's funny. I'll be back. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, <laughs> that's uh, even a second growler. It does a lot. Yeah. Really. People I know ask you tons of stuff like uh, barrel aged stuff. And, uh, for those who don't know uh, Petacolis, they do it a different way. Well, not a different way, your own way, right? Only mainly draft. Uh, you can't get it in can't, you can't get it in bottles, can't get it exclusively draft, right? Uh, but then everyone who comes in wants to tell you, you need to do it this way, right? Oh, of course. So like the the list of that of those, I'm sure I'm assuming is uh, barrel aged, you know, velvet hammer or something like that. But so what is the one where you're like, maybe we should kind of, or is that not? Do you got do you guys just strict policy of not listening to what other people say and like, or is that? Like how you said no sour beers even um, in the building. I'll get myself in trouble if I start talking or to don't, or, or don't even talk about it. Say pass, you know, whatever you want. No, you know. pass. That's not content, right? But that's after not, he that's makes a joke we're about here, we're not, yeah. we're not passing on any question. <laughs> Nothing's out of bounds here, right? Um, that's a good question because I've probably become a little bit more lax um, over the years in terms of you know, I, again, I said, hey, I want people to spread their wings, do something, and you'll bring, I, I mean, 99 out of 100 ideas are bad, and we're not going to do it, but the one that is gold, right, it's like, yeah, okay, we're absolutely going to do that. I mean, the question we get the most is bottling and canning, right? And I, I assure you, we will put beer into a bottle or can, but I want to change a law first, right? I want to be able to sell beer to go. I think if yeah. every other state in this country can sell beer to go, you guys can sell beer to go. As a brew pub, we just... We, our volume doesn't work. It would allow us to change to that license. All I ask is if you help all the brewers get to sell beer to go, that you help my ten thousand barrel ceiling go away. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then you help us find four more. Days. <laughs> <laughs> right. Same, same team, buddy. Uh, but it's for us. It's always been about doing things a little bit differently, and the way we would distribute that beer would be a little bit differently than most people do. But. A lot of those things, the more you hear about it, the more questions we get, the more requests we get to do something, yeah. the more likely we are to do it. Because we are about listening to the market. And it's like, yeah. all right, if these people want this, we're going to do it. But yeah, I mean, a sour beer, a proper sour beer is probably not going to happen here because I'm too concerned about um, yeast mutation, wild yeast, and destroying, you know, what we've built here. I mean, as you guys know, there's yeah. some breweries that grew up and did a wild yeast beer and now cleanliness hey, is one of the now we're a farmhouse brewery yeah. well yeah now you are because everything's infected so that's all you've got if i was going to say so, four words about your brewery clean would be a way i would describe your beers so yeah and that's been a big part of it um yeah. so sour isn't something that's like yeah and then barrel aged to me it's like okay everyone's done that i mean it's i like to lead as opposed to follow you know um 
but I'm also, you know, to me, I'm a classic style kind of guy. I mean, the haze craze is huge. You guys make, yeah. you made you people know, drink an imperial red. So <laughs> right, my hat's right. off to you, sir. Uh, <laughs> going back to the original point, <laughs> that was never the intention to decide what the the, uh, the audience wants. You know? Yeah, that's right. Like so. And right after three really months, they were like, "Dude, you can't stop brewing this beer." It's like if we brew this beer now, we're gonna kill you. And, and that, so that beer just kind of took off on its own. It's like, all right, well, this is what we're gonna do. So, but I'm definitely much more likely to do something a little bit out of the box now than I would three or four years ago, just in the spirit of innovation. Yeah. And but to me, I challenge my guys. It's like, well, why do we need to do one of these things that you mentioned? Why can't we? invent one of these things. Yeah. I would rather invent it and be the first one to do it and then have everyone Amen. else follow it as opposed to be, oh, another guy is throwing their hat in the X ring. Couldn't agree more. You know, that was, uh, you know, with the eternal conversation of the people of Dallas, uh, you know, talking to the brewers of Dallas about the hazy IPA thing, you know, it was like, well, I'll do this. And it's like, because we want to do something. We, Let's, how about the Texas IPA? What the hell is that? You know, like, right? Yes. Let's, let's that's do what something I'm that's about. us. You know, yes. and that's and that's we want to. All right, be we've got West Coast. We've got East Coast. Why not a Texas something? Hell yeah! You know, yeah. Which, you know, which, only which the only, only thing that's considered a Texas <laughs> beer in the canon of brewing that I know of is a hoppy brown ale is spoken of as a Texas brown ale in home brewer circles, not necessarily in commercial beer circles, but in home brewer circles like uh, Logging is WTF. Uh, is called the Texas Brown Ale because the Texas Brown Ale is actually a, a hobby. Well, I mean, I think Dogfish and Dick Indian Brown, right? Like well, no, but but similar. no, but like Texas Brown is an old style. 15, that's 20 been years ago, oh, okay. Brown. the Texas before there was a Texas brew scene, there was Texas brewers, and Texas home brewers were famous for the Texas, Texas Brown Ale. Which, uh, which is we a actually hobby, hobby ass Brown Ale. I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but <coughs> Drew, I apologize. Uh, we just brewed a uh, Texas Brown and put it in bourbon barrels. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that but sounds it's, uh, We are your overlords, and it's uh, with uh, Brash. Uh, it is oh, not nice. a. It's not a collaboration. It is also not a collaboration. <laughs> <laughs> We're merely there. <laughs> right. Observing. We're against collaborations all as a whole. <laughs> we we brewed a beer in the spirit of Good Friend Package's second anniversary, which I think is a legal way to phrase it. And gotcha. we actually have a bottle that's out in the market in distribution cycles, and we have to sharpie over the things before we let it out of the market. <laughs> and so beers but, that you buy at right, at but Brain if Dead, the TABC is looking, you're just kidding. Beers that you can buy <laughs> at Brain Dead are fine because right. they don't have to be label approved. Right. But any that yes. go out into the distribution right. cycle, it's like, it's like, and I, I'm sure that's how you send it out to the TABC, a little sharpie. That's, yeah. that's, our, <laughs> that's our Lagunitas, the chronic, our censored, uh, the chronic is, is it was super the, fun is the going good friend package, aka party. That's awesome. Program. I didn't so, know about that. That's cool. I didn't know you guys were against collaborations. That's what no, I was No, no, no. I, 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 <laughs> we need a collective you guys. I actually kind of am against collaborations, actually, but, you know, not against them. Well, to it's me, it's just not necessarily for us. I mean, yeah. I, well, I, a lot of people have contacted us about, hey, let's do a collaboration. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> somebody just said, <laughs> like, uh, like we did with Collective. Yeah, yeah. You know, I just think there you needs know, to be that? something a little bit more not unique. I don't know that you know, two North Texas East. brewers getting together <laughs> and doing something presents a lot of excitement. I mean, we did one with a brewery in Columbus. Um, yeah. Land Grant because they're big soccer fans there and we're big soccer fans here so we wanted to do something for that match and it made sense and then the other one we did was with Green Flash um, and that made sense for them and us at the time mm -hmm. um, so I I don't want to do a hundred class it's like I see what you know, you're saying the it, only it reason really I would say different. that it is because uh, we still have to educate our people you know that, that come into the to the bar I'm sure you guys see it all the time is that they don't really they, there's a lot of people that know about beer. Right, but there's a lot of people that don't. They just come in to drink, and so to make those things, they're like, "Wait, these are two breweries doing what in here?" So it's like it just well, none, brings it to their and not know. just the consumer. I mean, the brewers too, right? Having Chuck Silva in here. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm talking I'm, about strictly about North Texas brewers doing it together, because then it like brings oh, it, oh, oh, then it gotcha, brings it to gotcha. the forefront of like, what are these brewers? Yeah, but that the are benefit is the same because you but are yeah, going Chuck somewhere else. Sweet, no, no, no. Right. I mean, you're learning about their processes. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's kind of where I was going, where he was seeing kind of how we did things, and when he went and brewed over at Land Grant, literally went to their brewery. I mean, there's an educational benefit to it as well as 
for the brewers as opposed to just the consumers. But I, I hear what you're saying. That, yeah. oh, all right, these two guys got together and did this. But and to be fair, uh, Ben Ben Full of super cool. This is how cool Brash is. I was like, hey, I got this idea, and he goes, yeah, just do that. I was like, wait, you guys. We're not going to do anything about it, like whatever. We're not so, talking about this. So it's all good. <laughs> so if we're not doing it, I apologize. We'll just make the beer. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good, man. Uh, so, yeah. Well, that's the thing with with Chuck that I was laughing about and I was going to mention because we were making some changes up. I mean, during the brew, right? Yeah. And he looks at me, and I've got like I'm hand doing all of my math, yeah. right? Calculate. He's like. You still do it like that? Like you don't have a program? <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, this is how I learn. This is what I do. And he's like, man, that's awesome. I haven't done that yeah. in forever. Stay sharp, baby. Stay yeah, sharp. yeah. And so I thought, well, that was kind of a cool little exchange that we had. Is it the, stop, the, the stop Excel spreadsheet? Like <laughs> <laughs> My numbers say this, and his numbers say that. And yeah. I'm like, what do I do? <laughs> <laughs> this much hops, bird leg. Two minutes. Two minutes to hops. <laughs> I uh, I don't mean to nip a good time in the bud, but we're 50 minutes in, so it's time oh, to we close out these growlers. Do no, our no, job. no, no, we, we, we did. didn't set the record. We did. We did just fine. We had it. We set the record for awesome times had in a short amount of time. Well, so. I'm do the Come sit back down next thing week. Or <laughs> after. Yeah. yeah you can do that. Where is it? Uh, I don't know. Sit down there. Oh yeah, stick your mouth under. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so while we're while we're waiting, uh, thank you. Uh, you guys should check out uh, our YouTube channel. We've got there. Please subscribe to us on YouTube. We're up to about uh, 40 subscribers. Uh, we're working on getting to 10,000. So uh, let's keep on rolling. I'd love to be able to be youtubecom slash stations instead of capital W and four nine Y X Z. <laughs> Whatever. Anyways, and also thank you to Central Track. Anton is my man making all this happen. So it's not just my iPhone leaning up. Are we doing it? Uh, yeah, yeah, he's gonna do it. Do I my frame? Sledgehammer. Sledgehammer. Oh yeah, you're your frame. Oh. Nice. Oh. Woo. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow, really? Woo. That's the. That that's, like the two that's, seconds. The, that's the good stuff. Somebody right didn't go to college. Come on, bird leg. Show me how it's done. <laughs> <All right. laughs> no, uh, no, 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 my wife's gonna be like, what the fuck are you doing? Wait, man, you, you know, you're just having the strongest beer we make at the very end as long as you just well, well, sledge. Oh, you're gonna no, you gotta go sledgehammer. I'm going. No, I, I, I think the initial request from Drew was he sledgehammer. Wants to sit down. No, you gotta go sledgehammer. He yeah. just went sledgehammer. I thought it, it's a game. Yeah, it's, a game. it's a game, dude. Oh, you went sledge? Yeah, he went sledge. Oh, I guess that's why it's off. Oh. No. Freiman! Freiman is ah, the winner. My Freiman. head's bigger, it didn't fit. <laughs> oh, oh. Uh oh. This is a challenge. That's I mean, technique. That's a challenger. That's He's like a fish, ladies and gentlemen. You know it. He goes forever. Yes. Uh oh. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit in my bird card. That was a whiskey face. Yeah, oh, wait, wait a minute. Am <laughs> I gonna be okay? That was yeah. a poor angle. Oh, okay. All right, are we switching? Sure. Now we gotta finish out. <laughs> we gotta finish out the growlers. Need yeah. help. That was a lot. <laughs> that was fun. Um, all right, yeah, that was a weird little. Thank end you, there. Drew. But uh, yeah, thank you, Andrew Herter, for chiming in that great. Well, he wants idea. Michael to do it. I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> I'm driving kids later. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, all right, let's close this up, guys. Let's close this up. All right, hey, I'm not gonna stop you. Yeah, he paused. We'll give you one second. If it was sit down, I could have fit my head under there. <laughs> always. You two guys, always the cheers. And the, always. Every time. I know it means something big, but I've never. It's I never just your home bar. Either. Cheers in your home bar. You know, like wherever your bar that you close it out. They, and they cut. And we're out. <laughs> hey. That was super fun. Now everyone stop. Pause, you guys. <laughs> they were like, they were all bored though. Like, nah, it's.